So this morning the Holy Spirit said to me, Kari, I want you to read Isaiah 54, 2 to 5. Now, Monica, you will know this. Um, I know you. And, um, you know, it's always so incredible for me that how the Lord comes and he confirms his word many times, um, you know, when we least expect it. And I was always so blessed every time where, you know, I give a word. Monica always said, this is exactly what God's been dealing with and, you know, what I've been going through. So I know, Monica, we'll, we'll connect again. And the Lord said to me, enlarge the place of your tent in Isaiah 54, 2 to 5. Enlarge the place of your tent and make room for more. Stretch the curtains of your dwelling place and do not hold back. Strengthen your tent pegs. In other words, make sure that your ten pegs are securely in the ground. For I will cause you to expand to the left and to the right. And as I read it and I decreed it, I said, thank you, Father. I received this, that you're going to expand us and you're going to, you know, stretch out ten pegs. And, and you, I know, Lord, this is what you're going to do. And the next moment, the Lord took me into a vision. And it was kind of an unexpected vision, not something that I normally get. And it was a vision of a baker that was busy baking a pie, making a pie. And he took some puff pastry out of a wrapper and he put it next to quite a big serving dish. And he took out his roller and then he started rolling to the left, stretching. Rolling to the right, stretching. Lifting it up, throwing it down again on the flat surface. Again, rolling to the left, rolling to the right, until the piece of the puff pastry perfectly fitted the dish. And I thought, this is, this is a nice vision. Thank you, Jesus. But what has that got to do with Isaiah 54? And the Lord said, it's got everything to do with it. Because I need you to know what I'm busy with in this moment. Because many of you are currently feeling like that, like that piece of dough. Being stretched on the left. Being stretched on the right. Being thrown down this way. And then just before you know it, then the roller comes again and roll over you on this side. And you're constantly in a place where you're feeling you're being stretched. Anyone with me here? And the Lord says, I need you to know that I'm shuffling and reshuffling things in the realm of, your, of the Spirit on your behalf. To get you ready to a place that I can bless you, to get you ready to a place that I can expand you, to get you ready to the place that I can give you what I promise you, that I can enlarge your territory, both in the natural, but also in the spirit. Because many of you, there's some new assignments that needs to come your way, but until you're being stretched and pulled into every direction, you will not be able to fit into the assignment, fit into the dish that I've got planned for you for this next season. Listen, many of us want the new assignments and we want the new territory. We want the new stuff, but we don't want the stretching. It's the stretching, the stretching of the dough, the rolling of the dough that will cause you to fit perfectly into the plan that he has for you. I don't know of you, but for many of us, 2024 has been a stretching year. And overstretching here. Some of us have been stretched in areas that we didn't even think it would be possible for us to still be here today. We were stretched out of our character, stretched out of everything that we thought that we, we, we thought it's, it's the truth and it's the faith. And it's like the enemy tried to even stretch us out of our faith. Who knows what I'm talking about? Our character was stretched, our faith was stretched, our trust in God was stretched. Our attitude was stretched. And I know that the Lord said to me, Kari, even though some of my children have felt that they were overstretched in finances or in health, overstretched in your relationship, that family member, that situation that you have to wake up every day to, even though you felt that at times that you felt so discouraged and if the enemy has won this round, God is saying, I need to remind you that I'm working in the realm of the spirit and I'm reshuffling things and I'm going to come with a surprise that will even surprise your enemy, says the Lord. And God is saying, I'm going to do this. And the Lord says, just don't stop praying, don't stop trusting and don't allow the enemy enemy to rob you of your faith in the season and don't get caught up in the stretching process 
Don't get caught up in your stretching process where you're feeling sorry for yourself. Murmur and complain. God is saying, I need to remind you. He's working behind the scene. And in order for you to survive any stretching season in your life, I need to tell you that you have to stay connected. You have to stay, and that's the time that you least want to be connected when you're stressed, when you're stretched. God says, stay connected and work with me. It's not a time to feel overwhelmed. It is not a time to feel timid. It's not a time to sit down. It's not a time to wish things can change and dream that things would change. God says, no, you rise up in power and you push in prayer. Even if it means you need to fast, God is saying, you decree, you fight, you resist. You keep on pounding heaven until hell loses its grip. It's not a time to lie down because this is exactly what the stretching wants to do. It wants you to lie down. And I felt the father was saying, tell my children, tell my children, peg yourself securely in me. Come up higher. Come to me. Run to me. Peg yourself securely in me and watch how I will use your stretching season like an elastic band and that I, that I, the elastic band of an arrow that I will pull to shoot you into rest, into exp expansion, and into a season of promises fulfilled. You see, in order for you to get where you want to be, you have to be stretched. And that stretching will work for you because it will be like an elastic band of an arrow that will shoot you to where God needs you to be in this next season. You need the stretching in order to go forward, even though it's not nice. I don't know about you, but I don't like it when I'm being stretched. Listen, I don't know about you, but I, I believe that the Lord is saying, if there's one person in the Bible that I, that I know was stretched beyond his capacity was Moses. Imagine, 40 years in ultimate wealth, the king's son, Pharaoh's son, 40 years. And then being stretched to go in a moment from ultimate wealth to ultimate poverty into the desert. Arriving in the desert, not knowing the culture, not knowing what he's going to eat, not knowing where he's going to go. He was found by Jethro, and for the next 40 years, he was again stretched beyond what he thought he would be able to endure. Because suddenly he found himself in a place where he not only had to learn to survive, but had to learn how to tend sheep and learn all about another culture and another language. And if that's not enough... Having a burning bush speak to you. I mean, come on. And the burning bush says, I am who I am. And I am is calling you to go back to Pharaoh and bring my people out into the promised land and just know this one thing. Over and above that I'm a covenant-keeping God, Pharaoh is not going to let my people go. What an incredible assignment. Woo! -hoo. I've called you. And by the way, he can't even speak. And he tried everything. He says, no, no ways. There's no way. Thank you, but no thank you. Nada, eh, we're not going to talk about this. Burning bush, we're not going to talk about this. I'm not going to do this. And God just ignored him. Because God knew that all the stretching, it was time for him to be shot into his ultimate assignment. He needed the stretching from luxury to poverty. He needed the stretching of understanding the culture and knowing how to survive in the desert. Because this is part of the, pro the, the process of shooting him into his next assignment. And many times, I can guarantee you, when he was sitting there, you know, looking after the smelly sheep, he didn't think that God's going to use him. And how many times we are in a stretching situation in our family, facing some severe financial situations and some tough decisions that we need to make. Come on, let's be honest with one another. Not knowing that this is part of that dough that's being stretched so that you can fit perfectly into your new assignment. Perfectly. And you know, when I looked at Moses being stretched, imagine having to lead people, six million, out and not being able to communicate. I mean, that's more than enough for you to stretch. I know there's some of you that will start stressing and stretching when we put you front in front here, let alone leading 
six million people. Come on. And the Lord says, your stretching is not to kill you, but it's to propel you. And I know many people feel that you're dying little by little, but God is saying, no, it's not. And you know, when I looked at Moses, it was incredible to me because that's the first time that I realized with Moses, when he was so stretched and God said, remember, Pharaoh is not going to let my people go. And when he came in front of Pharaoh, he was probably stressing, stretched to the T, knowing in his back of his mind, this guy's not going to let God's people go. And God says, you don't worry. You lift up your hands to heaven. You stretch out your hands to heaven. And suddenly miracles appeared. I came to the conclusion that every time Moses stretched forth his hands, after being stretched in the natural, in his mind, stretched in his body, stretched in his capacity, every time he stretched up his hands to heaven suddenly a miracle appeared when he came to the Red Sea suddenly he felt so overwhelmed and stretched that the Bible says he lied on the floor crying said I can't take it anymore take the people away from me and God says get up what are you moaning about stretch up move yeah stretch your hand to heaven and your staff and the moment he stretched out his hands to heaven like this as well as his staff, what happened? Suddenly, the Red Sea opened. And the next moment, as they all came through the Red Sea, it wasn't long when the Amalekites started attacking them. How many of you know, if you go through one stretching experience, the moment you get yourself ready to rejoice, there's another stretch coming, being rolled to this side and being rolled to that side and being thrown like the dough on the table. And Moses thought, sure, now can I at least have a breath, a breather, just to feel the breath of the Amalekites chasing them. And all of the Hebrews moaned and groaned. They were so scared. And they were just moaning. And again, Moses, I don't know what to do. I'm stretched to the capacity because how are we going to fight this? I've got people here that were slaves. They're not fighters. He was stressed. And stretched. And God said to him, tell Joshua to take his sword and go into the battle. But all you need to do is you stretch out your hands to heaven. And the moment he stretched out his hands to heaven, suddenly there was a miracle and the battle was stern. And the conclusion I want to make to you today, that as you stretch out your hands, which is a sign of surrender, when you are in a stretching place where your faith is being stretched, your character is being stretched, your finances is being stretched, your family is being stretched, when you feel like you are being stretched in all directions, Who knows what I'm talking about? That's the time when you lift up your hands towards heaven. Because every time you lift up your hands, you're saying, I surrender the stretching process to you. That's the time that God connects the stretching. He connects your hands to the miracle. And suddenly there's a shift. Suddenly there's a turnaround. Suddenly there's an intervention and a connection with heaven where heaven propels you. Heaven literally forces you to go into into a place that he has prepared for you that you are unaware of. Listen, I want to say to you, remember the stretching is to shoot you miraculously into a season of rest and expansion and a season where you can step into a time of promises fulfilled. It's not to break you, but it's to give him the glory. And all he is wanting you, all he wants to do is he wants you just to surrender every stretching situation to you so that he can come through for you in a way that you can give him glory. Amen and amen.